Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 1, lesson 4, we're doing ratio tables, page 39 in the 6th grade math books. So this is scan the lesson list, two things you'll learn about ratio tables. So we're going to learn how to make a table by finding equivalent ratios and then how to make a table by scaling Real world link. A punch recipe uses one container of soda and three containers of juice to make one batch of punch. Draw red counters to show the number of soda and draw yellow counters to show the number of containers of juice needed to make two batches of punch. So this is for punch, we use one container of soda. That's going to be in red. One container of soda. And in yellow, we're going to have three containers of juice. So this is going to be a one to three ratio, but it asks, it's asking us to make two batches. So I'm going to make another batch, one soda and three juice. So in total, I have two sodas and six juice. So number two, draw red counters show the number of containers of soda and yellow counters show the containers of juice for three batches of punch. So I'm going to do the same thing now and making three batches of punch. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So now I have three sodas with nine batches of juice. Find the ratio in simplest form of soda needed to make one, two, and three batches. What do you notice? For one batch is one to three. For two batches is two to six, which will reduce. And it's going to be the same ratio of one to three. The same with three to nine. When we simplify, we will get the same ratio of one to three. So what do I notice? We have equivalent ratios. And that's what it means to have equivalent ratios. Is we have different numbers, but they all equal the same amount. So one to three, two to six, three to nine. They all simplify to one to three. So equivalent ratios. The quantities is the opening activity can be organized into a table. This table is called a ratio table. Because of the columns are filled with the pairs of numbers that have the same ratio. It's 1 to 3, 2 to 6, 3 to 9. By the way, quantity, that means how, um, how many. That's an easy phrase to explain that. So, equivalent ratios express the same relationship between quantities. Example 1. To make yellow icing, you mix 6 drops of yellow food curling with 1 cup of white icing. How much yellow food curling should you mix with 5 cups? Well, that's when we uh, create a table, just like they did here. So, it says yellow... And then the other thing we had, so we had yellow food coloring, and we have white icing. I'm actually going to highlight this, this first one. So yellow food coloring and icing. So what we have is six drops of yellow to one cup of icing. Now it's asking... How much yellow food curling should you mix with five cups of white icing? 
So if my white icing, if I'm going to multiply this by 5 times 5 with 5 cups, so whatever I do to the bottom, I'm going to do the same exact thing to the top. I'm also going to multiply this by 5. That way, my ratios will remain equivalent. So 6 times 5 equals 30. So I'm going to add 30 drops of yellow food curdling to 5 cups of icing. And just to show these are equivalent, 6 to 1. If I have 30 to 5, if I divide them both by 5, I get a 6 to 1 ratio. So that shows that they're equivalent. So that's a one-step ratio table. I believe this one's going to be a two-step. In a recent year, Joey Chestnut won a hot dog eating contest by eating nearly 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. If he ate at a constant rate, determine how many hot dogs he would eat every two minutes. So we have 12 minutes. Our goal, it's asking us, we need to know how much you'd eat every two minutes. So we create a table first. I know there's a table right next to us, but we need to make sure we need, we need to make sure we know how to make tables. So it's hot dog, so hot dogs, and then 12 minutes. So we have hot dogs, and then we have time. So it said 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. Now we need to get from 12 to 2. I'm actually going to skip a step because I know we can. To get from 12 to 2, we have to remember it has to be division and multiplication because we're working with ratios. To get from 12 to 2, I can divide by 6. And the nice thing is, 66 also divides into 6. So 12 divided by 6 equals 2. We're dividing because now it gets smaller. I think previously it got bigger, so we multiplied. So whatever I do to the bottom, I'm also going to do to the top. So if I do 66 divided by 6, it's going to give me 11. So I have an 11 to 2 ratio, So, and I have my 2 minutes, and that's exactly what it's asking. So he ate about 11 hot dogs every 2 minutes. So go ahead and try A and B. Okay, so this is a patient receives 1 liter of flu IV fluids every 8 hours. At that rate, how many hours will it take to receive 4 liters of IV fluids? Well, if I went from 1 to 4, it's going to be 1 times 4. So whatever I do this to the top, I'm going to do the same exact thing to the bottom. So 8 times 4. So I have 32 hours. So my final answer is going to be 32 hours. For B, it says make to make cranberry jam, you need 12 cups of sugar for every 16 cups of cranberries. Find the amount of sugar needed for 4 cups of cranberries. I'm going to show you two, uh, both ways. Because I noticed we still have the table in the middle, and I didn't really address that. If you notice up here, they have 2 and 3. I skipped it just by dividing by 6. Because 2 times 3 equals 6. That's why I skipped a step. So here... If you want to get from 16 to 4, let me actually stick with my colors. If you want to get to 16 to 4, I can divide by by 4. 16 divided by 4 equals 4. And 12 divided by 4 equals 3. So with 4 cups of cranberries, I need 3 cups of sugar. And another way we can do this, I'm going to do it in red. I can do it in smaller steps. 16 divided by 2. And that's going to give me 8. 12 divided by 2 is going to give me 6. 
and then 8 divided by 2 gives me 4, and 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. That's why 2 times 2 equals 4. That's why I'd rather just use the greatest common factor. That way it's a little bit less steps. But the, what this is doing here is just getting you prepared for our next activity, which is scaling. Then I believe that means we're going to be multiplying and dividing if need be. It's going to require a lot of thinking. Yeah, multiplication here and division here. Multiplying or dividing two related quantities by the same number is called scaling. Sometimes you need to scale back and then scale forward to find an equivalent ratio. So it says, cans of corn are on sale at 10 for $4. So we have a ratio 10 to $4 here. Find the cost of 15 cans. So we need to get from 10 to 15 by multiplying and dividing. So with 10 to 15, there's no way we can multiply a whole number to get from 10 to 15. But 10 and 15 do have a common factor, and that's what we, we need to find. They have a common factor of 5, because 5 times 2 and 5 times 3. So I'm going to scale down to 5. And the way I'm going to do that is 10, we'll do multiplication in blue and then division in red. So I'm going to have 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now I now that I scale down, I can scale up to get to 15 times 3. And 2 times 3 equals 6. So 15 cans would be $6. And that's scaling up and scaling down. So the main thing you want to look for is, I looked for a common factor between the two. It says, Joe mows lawns at his summer vacation to earn money. He took 14 hours last week to mow eight lawns. At this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? So we have 14 hours and we need to get to 49 hours. Is there a whole number which you can multiply 14 to get to 49? No. Because it goes 14, 28, was it 46, something? No. I don't know. But no. It's just, so what we're going to have to do is we can find a common factor between 14 and 49. So we're going to scale back to 7 and then scale forward to 49. So if you look here, we did 14 divided by 2 equals 7. 7 times 7 equals 49 to get to our um, final answer. So the same thing at the bottom. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 4 times 7 equals 28. So he can mow 28 lawns in 49 hours. So go ahead and try C. So... I know that both 25 and 105 end in fives. And that means I can have a common factor of five because five can divide into both of these. So I'm gonna put five in the middle. In order to get from 25 to five, I need to divide by five. And then to get from five to 105, I multiply by 21. So 10 divided by 5 is going to equal 2. And I have to multiply times 21. 21 times 2 equals 42. So he should be 42 inches. So here is example five, which is going to go over it with you guys. On her summer vacation, Leia exchanged $50 and received $60 Canadian. Use a ratio table to find out how many Canadian dollars she would receive for 20 American dollars. Set up a ratio table, use scaling to find the desired quantity. So on her vacation, she exchanged 50 American 
and receive 60 Canadian, and that's the first thing here. But we need to find how much to get from 50 American dollars to 20 American dollars, and that's going to be our final answer here. So we cannot get from 50 to 20, but 50 and 20 do have common factor of 5. You can also use 10. But um, they used, the book used 5, so 50 divided by 10 equals 5. And now we can get to 5 to 20. 5 times 4 equals 20. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do the same to the top. 60 divided by 10 equals 6, and 6 times 4 equals 24. So she will receive 24 Canadian dollars for 20 American dollars. And that is the end of the lesson, so thank you for watching.